Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is 1990s web insecurity. Today's story is kind of weird and it shows us that horribly insecure websites are still a thing. Basically, the story comes from an article by Ars Technica as well as some posts by Reddit users. Basically, Mozilla, the creators of Firefox, in their public bug tracking system received a complaint that said that a website owner, the owner of the website called oilandgasinternational.com, did not appreciate the fact that Firefox labeled their site as insecure. What turned out happening is Firefox and other browsers like Chrome will label your site as not secure if you have a login page that's only HTTP. And this is true, by the way. If you're asking for user credentials through an unencrypted page, you have some pretty significant problems. In any case, this web owner still submitted their complaint to Mozilla, showing that they already don't know a whole lot about security. But it actually gets a whole lot worse there. Some Reddit users stumbled upon this complaint and then went to this particular site and ultimately tore it apart. As I said, already not using HTTPS for your login page already proves that this site wasn't very secure despite this person's complaint. That puts your users at risk of having their credentials sniffed in man in the middle attacks. And that doesn't only put them at risk on your site, but if they use the same credentials everywhere, it's a pretty bad thing. But these Reddit users started poking at the site and found a number of major issues. First of all, they used the classic SQL apostrophe in one of the login fields on this web page. And by the way, apostrophes are a reserved SQL character. And by trying them in these fields, you can see if the web developer was smart enough to actually escape certain reserved characters, among other things. What they found was first, they got a huge error. This particular web developer had verbose logging, which shared just about everything about the database behind this particular website. Worse yet, it looks like the SQL login is just a concatenated SQL query, meaning uh, the query is right there in the web page. By modifying some stuff in that particular login parameter, it was pretty easy for uh, these Reddit users and attackers to actually send any SQL command to this particular database, which it turns out they did. They also apparently found that uh, the passwords stored in this database weren't hashed at all, they were clear text, and apparently one of the Reddit users obviously someone that's breaking the law, seem to have dropped the user table. The bad news is that anyone that uses this site probably can't access it right now, but the good news is if they did drop that table, it uh, protects these same users from having their passwords stolen by more malicious hackers. In any case, the Reddit users continue to tear apart this site. They found that the page that accepts credit cards is also over HTTP. That means credit cards could be transmitted in clear text, despite the site saying that it actually uses secure forms to transmit this data. In any case, it's clear the person behind this oil and gas international site is using horrible web security coding practices. Really, they have no web security coding practice. This site is circa 1990. It's a perfect example of some of the worst ways to create a dynamic site nowadays. I'm actually pretty surprised about this. I've actually been showing some very basic cross-site scripting and SQL injection demos for a long time, just for an educational purpose. In fact, here's a video I posted in 2012 of one of these these demos. Now for these demos, I use super basic SQL injection techniques on really insecure websites that were made purposely for demonstration purposes. In fact, I showed the same technique you can use to hijack this particular site itself. Now I picked these very basic SQL injections because they're good ways for someone that doesn't understand SQL injection to learn. However, I'm somewhat embarrassed by showing this type of hack because many websites have since kind of evolved. Many uh, web developers, even ones that still make coding mistakes today, have kind of got past these login pages. A lot of people are at least using stored parameterized procedures. They're doing things like escaping certain things in their inputs and sanitizing their inputs a lot more. That's not to say SQL injection and cross-site scripting aren't still possible. They definitely are. But nowadays you have to use more tricks. You have to kind of find flaws much deeper in web applications or use certain obfuscation techniques to get SQL 
injection to work in, in places where there are security mechanisms trying to prevent them. Again, the moral of this story is to learn from this website and to avoid doing what it's doing. If there's any takeaway to this story, it was surprising for me to see a website out there that still uses these very, very bad practices. Hopefully this is just one of the few out there, but if you are a web developer, you have your own uh, commercial or even private website, you might want to look at some of the mistakes these type of developers are making and also look at the Reddit thread to see how these hackers actually found all these issues. And question whether or not your website has any of them. Anyways, interesting story. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.